button up suit and tie because that's just not the kind of girl I am. If you can't take me with my natural curls and my bamboo earrings, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, like it's just, it's just me. And so I don't want, I don't want to get to some place where I'm feeling like I have to confine and constrain and like be in this box because like that's not where I would personally thrive. So my advice to the young people out there is present yourself as you be equipped though. Like no y'all so we got another episode of law of athlete podcast today we got my girl my good sis one of my mentors all that good stuff ariel chambers and her law today is your character can take you places that your talent can't and i think she's just like a real true testament to that um not saying that she's not talented because she is super super talented but i know people know her for her personality and being bubbly and it's probably helped you, you know, go far Right. running, um, highlight her, which is powered by bleacher report. So, you know, that's big time. We all get the bleacher report notifications to our phone. Every time. I think I just got one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's a real just honor to talk to you today, having you on. We know you got a busy schedule, so. Welcome to Law. We have to be present with each other. We have to be present with each other because we were with each other before, you know, everything started coming about. So happy to be here. Good to know you guys have the VR app. That's hilarious because that means y'all get the notifications from the app. So keep that app going. We're trying to push it forward. So keep it, keep it, um, keep it live. You with the uh, NC State, man. That's what's up. Back on the ACC, baby. That's our hand thumb. We got our hand thumb. No, like- this is a long. This is a llama. A llama? This is a llama. Uh-uh. This is the wolf. He just disrespected. If this one thing that Ari don't play about is NC State, bro. She. I'm just saying. This you know, I've had to all day, all day. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, you can't let him disrespect. We gonna have to. Yeah, he gotta get off the show. Get him off the show. I didn't even hear you. We got. We gotta get him off the show right now because he just disrespected the NC State. Gotta watch out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, so so Sed has the first question for you. So we know about highlight her, but like I know the name used to be um We are Jayla. Uh-huh. What 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 is that? How did that come about? Okay. We are well, Jayla. Like, I'll just I'll just give you a rundown on how I started at Bleacher Report. Basically everything I do now, I was doing on my own, on my own dollar. I'm sure we'll get into my story, but Bleacher basically hit me up and was like, hey, do you want to spearhead our women's platform and grow it from the ground up? So they handed me a platform. There were no followers on it, no posts. It was just completely bare, but they had claimed the domain and it was called Jalen. I was like, make it make sense. And according to them, it was uh, a name that was all encompassing of um, Gen Z girls and women. And it was, it was something they had done a study about and I didn't connect with it, right? So what I did, I they trusted me to move forward with a different creative direction that can make sense and stay that that wide net of what women and girls sports are. So like, I was like, okay, we're powered by House of Highlights, which is a portfolio brand of Bleacher Report. We're all in a family to make it more brand cohesive. It makes sense to do highlighter because not only is highlighter is like, when you highlight something, you, you, you shine light on it, it's bold, it's electric, it's in your face, um, it's something you pay attention to. So it just made sense in my head. I'm not, you know, I'm not a marketing genius, but I was like, hey, this will work. And so it ended up working and it, and it took the platform to the next level. I mean, I was doing the work, the groundwork for the first eight months with that name, Jayla. And for me to even get off the ground with that name, hey, shout out because you didn't right. make sense in my head, but we, we move forward, we got, we got it going. So yeah. so do you like run the whole platform like highlight her? That's so the first 18 months actually I was on my own. So a lot of people don't realize that. They think that because the bleacher report name is on it, it's you get a whole team of people know what what they hired me to do is be disruptive and and, and 
occupy a white space that hadn't been occupied yet in within the Turner Sports family. So I did it on my own, limited resources, but that kind of paid off in the long run, right? You get an organic following, you get, you get that, you, that hands-on feel with what your audience wants. You know what doesn't work, you know what does work. You get to talk to them. Highlighter is all about being a community. Um, so that, that, that allowed me to be more connected. And then when it came time for me to get more resources, because you prove that, that the investment should be there because of the, the numbers that you bring in, they awarded me to hire a small team. So Jasmine Brown, she's one of the ones that I've known has covered the W for a long time. She's from the DMV. So I know y'all probably know her. And I'm like, 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 yes, Jasmine. And she bakes phenomenal food. She's a baker. <laughs> Oh, she baked? Yeah, she has a, a baking company. I've ordered some cookies from her. They were good. <laughs> so I can't cook worth nothing, but she be baking and cooking and hey, do your thing in the kitchen. But you also, you know, she came on and then um, another one, uh, I see an independent contractor, Krishan Williams, she helps out. And then Felicia Kelly finally came in to help me get organized and everything. So we have a nice team of like three and a half, four people. <laughs> So it, it's really, really like a, a small group of us. And I, and I love that we're able to come together and provide, you know, perspectives on the game that doesn't necessarily have to bank on big names or big stories. We create um, the stories that we want to create and tell the stories we want to tell. And it doesn't matter what sport, like I'm very basketball heavy. That's how I've always been. But to, to be able to tell the story of some, like I found out there are surfers that, that are like the competitive league of surfing and then uh, hockey and soccer and just being able to learn about those sports has been really dope. When I was looking at the, uh, like, your social media, like, for uh, Highlight Her, I'm like, yo, it's so many different sports, especially, like, with women. There's so many different sports, and it's like, how do you find all of these this content to post? It's like, so much stuff can happen. So it's like, what's your strategy behind, okay, there's this many sports, we're going to post this many highlights today, and then tomorrow we're going to post this many highlights, especially when you was doing it by yourself. Like, how did you help? How, how did you manage all of that? A lot of say it's like this big science. It's just... Me as a fan, I, I, okay, first of all, I intentionally stay on the women's side of things. I think that the men's side has enough coverage. And who don't say anybody who does cover the men's sports, like that's that's great stepping into whatever you want to step into, follow your passion. But my passion just so happens to be intentionally on the women's side. So me being a fan of women's sports and me have been an athlete my whole life, like I, I have different perspectives of what I would want to see told, what I want out of a platform and so I did it I, I did what I would want to see and then through doing it my way I was able to listen to other people's ways and think think about like the things that went horribly wrong or things that went really really well or why they went well uh listening to my GM who I was like like he he's more of the UGC side and I'm more of the highlight side like I like conventional journalism I like the sports highlights. I like the storytelling. He likes the the moments. He likes the the things that you know Gen Z like. I'm I'm very much like I don't care about viral things. Um, but just trusting the people around me um, about like what the general masses likes as well has been really really helpful. So um, as far as like strategy behind it, it's just paying attention to what you know what's going on in women's sports as a whole and be open minded. And, and willing to cover things that aren't in your comfort level. Like when I first started covering soccer, I had no idea the clock went up and I didn't understand. Like it, it just kept going after 90. And I was like, what's the point <laughs> of having a regulation? Like I, I'm confused. And, and the way they were just, long. I mean, in the way they would just chip trip each other. And so I was just like, oh God, <laughs> this is crazy. Oh. But, <laughs> but <laughs> the game be over. I'm like, what's the score? Two to one. What? <laughs> and then the ref just decides when he wants to, like to stop the game. Uh, so ma'am, what are we doing here? Like, the, I got the biggest floppers. Soccer might got the biggest floppers. I see. Yeah, but Maybe. the women go hard. You watch the national team, you be like, damn, nice. they, right. they some dog. Like the first, the first game that I watched for our national team, like it was this big watch party that BR was actually hosting, and it was uh, the the World Cup, like the preliminary rounds or whatever. They beat the team 13 and 0. And I was like, I'm sh I don't know much about soccer, but I'm sure this score is not supposed to be this high and this different. <laughs> Dang. Right. Yeah, that's that's crazy. And I'm also just asking you that question because, like, with law athlete, you know, it's more so just about all sports and all athletes. So it's like, you know, how do you attract – I understand how you attract, like, the women's sports, but it's like, okay, it's so much content. So how are we going to be able to attract not only women's sports but men's sports as well mm -hmm. with so many different sports in this industry? 
So that, just trying to figure out, you know, how you think. Well, you know, I, I think something to put into perspective, too, Ari started this, and she's well-known in the right. sports community, her word, uh, right. people take it. I don't know if you know this, but – um, WNBA Social, myself and Liv and Jenny, we call you and Christina Williams the Woj of our league. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, because like y'all always have the breaking news and stuff like that. So we're like, if they tweeted it, they might know something before us. Or like, right. if they put it out there, like the WNBA community or the women's basketball community are going to take more than likely their word for it. Right. So I think. Um, be- being well known helps, you know, with establishing it and continuing to like push. Mm-hmm. your content and stuff like that and and building it up but I also think just going for it and that's something that I really love about Ari um, when I first met her she was still freelancing and I don't even know what that was like maybe three years ago two and a half years, years ago, ago yeah. yeah yeah like yeah. yeah, time flies. So I was working game night staff for the New York Liberty, and I used to always see her like on the court mm-hmm. just with her cell phone a tripod and she was breaking news, like, from her phone type stuff. In the locker room, like, building relationships with players and stuff like that. And uh, she tells me that's kind of, like, how it started. With, with She was like, all you need is a cell phone. Like, it's funny that you mentioned that, Ty, because a lot of people just started following the, the W within the past two years. So they don't really know where it came. They saw me after Bleacher Report, right? Um, but this has been like a decade on of just grinding it out, like with no resources, you know, paying out of pocket and people, people don't ever get to see that, that grind. They, they see, they see now, you know, you turn the page and, you know, I still have a lot of learning to do, but I'm financially set. I'm, I'm set with my resources. You know, I, I am credible in this space, but they don't see those times where I would be with my cell phone. And this is back when nobody did so, like social things. So have to battle it out in the locker room with the news crews with the huge cameras on their shoulders and and they're like what is this little black girl doing and I'm like hey mind your business I'm doing it I mean I was a PR's worst nightmare <laughs> saw you do that one time though you're like <laughs> like I'm a PR's worst I was a PR's worst nightmare but I think that that's that's what really really helped me occupy spaces because I didn't I didn't wait for the permission to do things I I had friends that were in the league and I had personal relationships with them and they would introduce me to other people and then people just start trusting me with stories. But that is honestly, like you, you, you say that you guys re- refer to me as the woes of the league. That's not really where I'm coming from. I love the credibility behind that. And I'll leave the breaking news to Christina. I'll leave it to Rachel. Unless, unless somebody says, all right, I want you to break it. Breaking news isn't my thing. I want to tell stories. So, I mean, and, and these people are great at what they do when they break news and and if a player reaches out to me like last summer and says, hey, we want you to speak on behalf of us, great. But my whole mission is to tell stories and amplify the voices of the players. That's what I've always been about. And and I do whatever it takes to get that story. So if I don't get access, I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. I'm coming and slithering and find you. Mind you now that I have like that that credibility backing me and, and those the PR knows me and the players know me and like it's, it's a lot more well known so it's not as much of a slithering situation but you best believe you know we had to make things happen we had to connect the dots uh, before the dots were even drawn okay so so it seems like you're pretty much comfortable with being uncomfortable like that's what it sounds like you were comfortable in your grind with being uncomfortable I just want to know like at what moment um, before you pretty much blew up, I want to say, what moment you said you, um, you know, you you had your your tripod, your camera, you was walking in locker rooms, you was introducing yourself to people, putting yourself in those situations. At what moment you thought you were just going to give up, or did you ever? Oh yeah, okay. So it's yeah. funny how Ty um, works for the W social team. I actually applied for that job. I want to say 2017, 2018. And they just told me I wasn't the right fit. So I thought that my career was over, right? I was like, oh my God, I'm so upset. But mind you, LaChina Robinson was my mentor. She was like, girl, I'm gonna give you an hour and you gotta get together after this because you, you look crazy. Um, but I've had so many doors closed in my face because people didn't either understand what I was trying to do or they didn't want me in these spaces and that's fine. Um, but the moment where I didn't forget or didn't give up is in 2018 Minnesota All-Star when Liliana, the girl who posed in front of Maya Moore's poster with her arms outstretched, she went viral. And uh, her dad 
was like, I need you to meet my daughter. I was like, absolutely. So she, she, I met her and she put her, my media pass around her neck. And then the next day her dad was like, all she could say was, uh, daddy, she has hair just like mine. And I knew that at that moment that that, that, that was my responsibility to be the representation. That was my responsibility to make it uh, for those who don't fit the mold or who, who just are underrepresented in these spaces. And you can do it your way. You can, I have, I mean, don't get it twisted. I do have, I have a degree from Oxford. I, I, I'm an English and journalism double major. So it's like, I have the, on paper, the credibility. I have the experience. I had done it myself, but I want my delivery to be my own. And that's what I really, really inherited. I was like, okay, you're, you're impacting, you're touching people on your own dime in, the, in not the most refined way. So you must be doing something right. And I had a great tribe around me that was never going to let me fail. So between those elements of like having to serve as the representation, because, you know, there weren't many of us back then and there still aren't, we still have a long way to go. But between that and then having people that just would not let me fail, that's, that's where I was like, okay. I would, I can't give up because I'd be letting myself down. I'd be letting everybody who's rooting for me down. Right. And I, I think something else that's like very pivotal about your story is you didn't play basketball, but you know, you, you know, the game, not, not a hooper, nothing like that. Um, cheerleader, um, dance. Mm -hmm. So she started out dancing at MSG, correct? I gave you my cheerleading resume or whatever. So uh, <laughs> I've been cheering since I was five. I'm actually a black belt in Taekwondo. I was a gymnast as well. I played volleyball. Couldn't have, like look me up in the state of North Carolina because um, I was a great middle blocker, not so much a great hitter, but those blocks were recorded. Honey. Okay. It's, it's, it's about making an impact. That's what sports <laughs> is about. I, I, get, I got you a nice little quick set here and there, but um, I, was, I was definitely a middle blocker. Middle hitter is a little, you know, lenient. But I ended up cheering. I cheered at NC State, and then I cheered at um, MSG for the Knicks, the Rangers, and the Liberty. And so it, I had the benefit when I did try to switch into journalism. Um, the season ticket members, they're great. And because I was on Torch Patrol, which is the chilling spot for the Liberty, I knew all the legends. So I can call Kim Hampton anytime. I, you know, Teaspoon has seen me around. Katie Smith has seen me around. So I was able to connect with them in a way and so that led to me meeting Cheryl Suits and me meeting these people and these spaces that that gave me uh, a level of credibility that um somebody who hadn't had known the legends or hadn't known the history um would have but I, I grew up studying the game I used to want to do color commentary and so just knowing the game in and out like that and then Maria Taylor told me about five years ago, hey, there are not many people in play-by-play. -play. You might want to get into that. So I thought I want to do that. So I really, really studied the game. And before I was on camera, I was a writer. And Howard Mendel gave me my first like sports writing job. And he really nurtured me. He, he didn't have to open those up, up those doors. I give LaChina a lot of credit. But Howard was really the one who got me in these spaces, got me in front of Michelle Vogel to talk to her about the editorial landscape, got me knowing you know, about Ackerman who was the president of the WNBA, like got me knowing these people. Um, and, and even in your office, like you're like, just getting to know the right people and maintaining those relationships, knowing how to write and, and communicate with people too was really, really strong. So by the time I wanted to do my own thing, I have, like, they're like this little shoot. I'm like, nope, because here are my bylines right here. Here are the people that I know, here are the spaces I've been in. I've covered this, this, that, and third. And so when a Bleacher Report reaches out to me, because I didn't apply for it, they reached out to me. When they reach out, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to do this. So, yeah. And that's the testament to what? Your character at the end of the day. People know that. For my passion, huh? I think it's more of a testament. It, it is character. But knowing your, your passion and your calling and being really steadfast in that and, and faithful and like knowing that your journey is your journey is, is something that's really stuck with me throughout this whole thing. I love so. that. I definitely love, love that. It. All right, so so we want to see your WNBA jerseys that you got. The new jerseys at that, they doing it big for the 25th season. So I'm I'm really, really excited for it. Um, more so the hype around it. Like, all the coverage has been awesome from, from you to overtime women's basketball to all the other sports outlets. Shoot, we got ESPN, uh, you know, sending notifications to the phone about the jerseys and stuff like that. So let's see – the ones that you have first of all shout out to my nike family um y'all are great i love when an organization or a company listens to players 
And so what they've done, they've, they've collaborated with WNBA players and the teams to, to really tell a story. So um, the first one that I have right here is the Liberty Equality jersey. Um, I'm, I'm, I love the copper on the seafoam. I think it's so hard. And AT&T is my uh, employer. So shout out to AT&T family. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that the, it, the first of all the fit is very different it's it's more true to size um it, it just looks smoother right it looks cleaner and then they have a nice little uh it's so cute the little logo right here and then um uh, the numbers on the front and the back the no sponsorship on the front covering everything oh, boom yeah. yes you can actually see the the team name right the jersey yeah. that it is right here Oh, that's, nice. that's the Rebel, Rebel edition. edition. Rebel. Yes. Um, so I, I, when I had this on, I was like, oh, this is real cute. You know, I never thought I'd be, you know, repping lips like this in a way that's not a jersey dress because, you know, I still have my torch patrol uniform where I just have my, my dress and I haven't been able to let it go. But this, DC, let me tell you. So I understand that this one's under a little bit of controversy just because of the 19th Amendment and what it didn't open up doors for black women for, but I understand the intention behind it. And I really respect the fact that um, they thought about something that was opening doors for women. Again, uh, you know, whatever. But I think that this is a really, really tight jersey that pictures don't do it justice because you don't see the detail. <laughs> That's detail right there. That is, oh my yeah. goodness. It has words all up in the back of it too. It's just so fire. Yeah. Got the custom jersey. Oh, you got the custom jersey. <laughs> Monumental. Shout out to everybody in DC. <laughs> First of all, this this detail right here, I don't know if y'all can see that. Yes. It's hydraulic and inspired. It has the year and my name on the back. And again, ATT shout out. Um, but <laughs> but this one, this one is so cute in person. And I really encourage people um if they do change or if they don't, um, to check this one out. Because I mean, it's just so intricate that I, you know, you can't help but appreciate it. Um, so I really do like that one. Also, I can't wait to get my hands on a Chicago Sky jersey because it's. Totally I was about to ask you that. Are you getting a Candace Parker jersey? Absolutely. I thought I thought my whole life I was a Sparks fan, but it turns out I'm a Candace fan. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still got mad love for the Sparks because you know that's who I've been rooting for since day one. You know, Lisa Leslie, and then it just transition to Candace, but uh I go where Candace goes. So I I everybody who knows me knows that I love Candace. And so I gotta get me a Chicago Sky jersey that's all about shattering the ceiling. And I love that that it had it's just fire. It's like blue with lighter blue and it just looks like shattered glass and it's just very on point with you know my vibe. So I got get me a CP3 jersey. Yeah I do it. So I'm a homer in a sense. Like okay. when I started going to the Washington Mystics games at their new arena, it changed uh, like the trajectory of how much like I love watching them play. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, I don't know if y'all been to the arena yet, but the go-go play there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's so nice. So I love the Mystics and I was, I'm always a Sparks fan, but going off of the basis that my dad raised me a Lakers fan. So right. I always love the Sparks as well. Right. Um, I'm also... I know I'm saying more than one team. I love the Chicago Wait a Sky. I say what's your team? Just team? Just one? If I had to choose one? Wow. Hey, man. Yeah. If, if I had to choose one off the strength, the Mystics. Okay. All right. Okay. That's very safe for you. I love that now, for you. Yeah. Do you have a team? <laughs> love I don't, to be honest. You got a team? <laughs> to be honest. All right, so choose one. Now is the time. Yeah, watch watch the W this summer, and I'm, I'm sure a, you'll have a team, and you'll see some of the most skilled basketball honest, ever. To be honest, to be honest, I'm a rival Connecticut son. To be honest, well, my team is Liberty because I because I'm a New Yorker, so my team is Liberty. Okay. <laughs> I hate the Connecticut choice. The Connecticut choice is really like to me. Connecticut has always had, you know, at least in the recent years, has had so much talent uh, it does tend to go overlooked. But they're a great organization. I actually did some in-arena hosting for them. So they're they're one of the first teams that ever gave me an opportunity. So shout out to Connecticut Sun. Wonderful people. Love them so much. But yeah.
You gotta go to Mohegan Sun, go to the Krispy Kremes, get and you a donut, enjoy the game. <laughs> Honestly, though, that was one of the best parts of going on. It's fun, though. And then, you know, just walking through, all up and through. You can shop a little bit. You can get your donut at Chick-fil-A. You can go right in. Mohegan is nice. What's What's your favorite arena to go to? I mean, Staples. All day. Staples all day. Um, it used to be MSG, obviously, because I have like that was my home for like I would get MSG like five days out of the week. Like I literally would sleep on my dressing room couch. Um, but that was like a very homely feel. But I, I love going to anytime I can go to an LA game, it, there's no feeling like it. And you see the Lisa Leslie court, it's just dope. Um, just the legacy that that, that purple and gold has, I think is really, really cool. And now they have an interesting Thing where they have this new wave of player you have the Ted Coopers like coming in and and just taking ownership of that while still having the legacy that is the Sparks so I'm really looking forward to going to a game and I honestly want to you know I'm messy so I want to see the Chicago LA game at LA. <laughs> <laughs> honestly though that's gonna be lit like especially when Candace goes back to play in Staples, like a, a, a homecoming, but almost like not really. Like you got to respect her though, like for all the things that she's done for LA. She gave that organization a lot. And I think that we need to give it, I mean, anytime I can give Candace her flowers, I'm throwing them. Um, and I can remove myself when I'm doing, being a journalist, but when I'm just talking to y'all and kicking, flowers all day, all day. <laughs> So who who has been you've interviewed tons of people in sports. So maybe we'll do a category. So for women's college basketball, who is like your favorite person to interview and like you'll never forget it. And then for the WNBA, who would you say you love interviewing the most and why? It's college. See, that's a difficult one because they go, they go and they turn into into pros. But I will say who I've had a lot of fun with in the past recent years, I love Dee Dee Richards. I think that every time, like my favorite piece that I did with her, everybody wanted to know how her puff balls um, stayed up. And I was like, okay, I'm a black woman. I can do this without offending people. And like, we have similar hair. So what I did, we did a hair tutorial as she was talking to me about how she got defensive player of the year. So just things like that, again, that's why you need black women in your, in your room. That's why you need them in your company because they can be like, Girl, let's get this edge control out and do this real, real quick and then, like, talk to you. I, I actually saw that interview, and I loved it, and I was like, me and her don't have the same texture. It won't work, but okay. <laughs> uh, we don't, we didn't either. You saw how my pop off in the, I have, anyway, we're not even going to get into that. But, I mean, I looked crazy, but it was fun to do. Um, I also, I know I'm going to stir a lot of pots with this one. I think Paige Beckers is such a great human. Um, not only is she a great player, but she, she really is a wonderful interview. She's, she's, she's great. So humble. Um, so like I started talking about when she was in high school, obviously. Um, but just knowing how she's going to develop. And that's another thing that we as media have to stop doing, putting this unnecessary pressure on players and, and setting them up for failure within the public eye. Um, because there's been so many talks that she wasn't even involved in. That then the cause the public to have a, a certain opinion on her, but I think I mean I'll go to bat for her. I think she's a wonderful player. I think she can develop into a great pro when it comes time for her to be a pro. But I, I loved her interview. She was just so wholesome, and it's something so like pure about her. Um, and those are I think my top two players right now for collegiate. My most impactful interview was Tierra Ruffin Pratt, and she was telling me about how. Uh, the night she got the call about being, you know, getting an opportunity to play for the Mystics was the night that her cousin lost his life at the hands of the police. And so that was probably the most impactful one. I love always talking to Skylar Diggins Smith because for some reason she's so vulnerable with each interview. And it's so great to see her just dive into that because a lot of people don't see that soft side of Skylar and in soft not having a negative connotation but like soft being her like hey here's my full self yeah I battled with this yeah I battled with that and so that was cool and another I have like so many like Kayla McBride talking about her mental health and we're, we were looking last season like what's wrong with Kayla like I I thought I said like Kayla so we were looking at you like what's going on and she was like well I was going through this that and third and so it's more than being analytical about a player it's just like what's going on in your personal life that's gotten you in this mindset that you can't 
to the point where we knew you could. Um, and so we had a discussion through that and just, I can't wait to see her with a fresh start in Minnesota this year. Um, so just anytime players can be their authentic selves and we just have like a conversation as a human instead of like me trying to push a narrative because that's never where I want to come from. So I can't, I can't pick one. I, I would just say like, I mean, Didi, she holds it down in college and now I can't wait till I talk to her and then Liberty. But uh, as far as pro, I mean, literally I can list them for days because they're all just so unique. I, would, I know what I'm getting when I'm talking to Courtney Williams. I know what I'm getting when I'm talking to Diane Kalaki. Two very different things, two, two very special things, but very different. And it's always fun. Right. That's tough. That's yes. a lot of people. I mean... I- <laughs> If you go through her page and just watch, like, all the, like, different interviews and, like, people that she talks to, I just feel like um, you sort of, like, bring out going back to that comfortability part of Mm -hmm. people where, like you said, it's like a conversation, like, us just sitting in a room, like, like, rapping, like, at the end of the day. Because that's all it is, really. To be honest. That's really all it is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you got to understand, I feel like with women and... Sports people in general, right? Mm -hmm. People try to put them under this microscope and we don't humanize them. And Mm -hmm. I feel like those conversations where you humanize them and like you genuinely like care and Mm -hmm. like you want to know, they're more open to talking to talking and just, you know, like rapping with you. And that's why I feel like there are certain people or they'll be more prone. Like if Ari asked for an interview, like, all right, yeah, what's up? Let's do it or whatever, because they know that she makes people feel comfortable and like exactly. she's not going to hound them or try to degrade them or anything right. like that. Or find like the next big story on them. You know what I'm saying? So My thing is, a, a lot of, a lot of people don't realize this about me. I go in like I'll, I, I might have talking points, but most times I just see where the conversation leads. And that's where you get really, really uh, impactful pieces when you just don't try I can't stress enough to not try to push your own narrative on players. Like, like I've gone into things thinking one thing, like, for example, I was talking to Lasia about this summer and standing up for, you know, black lives and being on the forefront. And she was like, I was tired. She thought I said, I was tired. Sometimes I just wanted to play. Then knowing what they went through in the bubble and we saw the day of reflection, we don't realize that half of them wanted to play right they came together as a whole because that's what they do they, they move as a unit and that's so respectable but we should also respect as the public the fact that you know they're they're varying opinions they're they're they, they don't always want to be you know the, these political activists sometimes they just want to exhale and that's okay that's a human side of them um you know shock to the lowering the rim uh, comment and we were all up and on granted I don't agree with lowering the rim but there are some players that do that they they think that the dunking would be cool for the game so just not trying to push our own narratives on players and letting them tell it as them so that's why I, I like to say a lot of times like instead of like breaking news and, and, and doing all these journalistic things I just want to talk to people and serve as their like megaphone and amplify I want to amplify um, these stories instead of force stories upon them and just get them to reiterate them. And speaking of, um, you know, pushing the narrative, like from the player's point of view, like um, what are some ways they can kind of like handle that situation if it ever happens? Like, you know, from that side of it, what's, what are some ways or some pointers you have for them if they get caught in that situation? I think that we're at a time it's very unique because people are starting to become more empowered to tell their own story on social media. They, it's this next generation. I, I mean, they crazy. You saw how in NCAA, uh, NCAA when they were like deprived of a weight room. So Donna was like, I don't care about y'all. Here's what's going on. This is how I feel about it. And kept making videos and kept going viral, period. Well, I can't say in 2009 when I was in college that would have happened. It just wouldn't have. It, I agree with that. <laughs> like, like it, it just wouldn't have because we didn't know the consequences that would happen. We didn't know if we should just be grateful and be quiet. And that's no testament to the character. That's just the climate that it was back then. Not everybody was empowered or emboldened to speak out. But as they go on, they're a little bit more uh, 
vocal and, <laughs> and reckless with their mouth. And I love that. I love the recklessness. I'm not even call it reckless. That has a horrible connotation. I love the transparency and the, the lens that they can tell their stories through because there can't be a filter on your own personal brand. Um, they take risks and they don't, you know, the, the, the consequences, they, they, they say, hey, we're already deprived. What you gonna do at this point? And so being able to take control through social media, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, however you wanna spread your message, your message is yours and they're realizing that. And so you see it with Chanae breaking her news of re-signing with LA. And, and then making her own documentary. You see it again with the college girls who or college women who sh showed what they were going through in NCAA. You, you, you see it within Nia and the rest of the UCLA who are communicating to like the traditional gymnasts, like, hey, we're not going to stay with this normal standard of, of dryness. We're going to turn it up a little bit. So I'm going to step in my routine. I'm going to give you a nice little vogue in my routine. And, and you see them becoming their own people. And I think that's beautiful. So. So, so like throughout your whole success and even some of your lessons and I wouldn't even say failures, it's more so just lessons learning um, situations like what advice would you give um, to a young woman that either is playing sports or just want to be in your shoes to be where you are? I would say when, because of the times we're in right now, Capitalize off the fact that you can brand yourself as you and there's going to be a space for you. Um, a lot of times, like, you know, when we were in college, we were taught this is how journalism is, this is how sports journalism is. Um, but now we've shattered that. We, we've broken path, broken those barriers and we've, we've moved past what we think will perform well. And just know yourself so you can connect to your audience and your most organic and authentic self. And people are going to know, people are going to know when you're you and they're going to be drawn to you as a whole. I would never present myself all buttoned up suit and tie because that's just not the kind of girl I am. If you can't take me with my natural curls and my bamboo earrings, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, like, it's just, it's just me. And so I don't want, I don't want to get to some place where I'm feeling like I have to confine and constrain and like be in this box because like that's not where I would personally thrive so my advice to the young people out there is present yourself as you be equipped though like know what you're talking about okay you might want to you might want to present yourself as fully you but just make sure you have those accreditations and, oh, yeah. and, and tools I mean run the, run the receipts okay run the resume um make sure you you know your stuff but be able to 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 present yourself as you and also don't wait for your yes that's like my my quote of it like don't wait for your yes like do it on your own i tell ty this in starbucks in westchester like don't wait for somebody to give you that opportunity i'm not sure that if you would have waited that you would have your podcast right ty like i just think that like proactiveness goes a long way and it's just so understated whenever you talk about wanting to do something because why would you even want to wait for somebody to give you that that check when you can just create on your own maybe it's a smaller scale like I was paying out of pocket five thousand a season until um Bleach Report found me like I was paying to cover the league and that was out of passion but I, I if I would have waited for you know Turner to find me it would be a very different story it would be a very different delivery and I wouldn't be as happy and so they know what to expect because I did it my way and I think that that's really really cool because now I'm in a comfortable spot that's tough that's yeah, a law, that's a law right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's that's definitely that's definitely law, and I just feel like um, sacrificing, like mm -hmm. it's it's a sacrifice to to chase your dreams and to get to where you want to go. But if you believe in your dreams and in yourself, like you can definitely do it. Because I know it was oh. day, yeah. Um, when I used to when I used to cheer for the Knicks, I remember it was late October, early November, but it was ESPN media the, the next day, right? And I'm living in the city. This is back when I lived in Manhattan. I'm in Tupac, New Jersey now, but I was living in Manhattan and I, we had a game that night. It was a late game. So the game started at 8.30. I didn't leave MSG till about 11.30. And I knew I had to be at ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut at 7.30. That means I had to rent a car around like 3.30. So I got like maybe, because you know, the train home, maybe three hours of sleep how to get up, go to Jersey to get the rental, to drive to Bristol, to cover this, 
this media day. I, I knew I had to be there because that was back when it was like closed. And so I was the only person who was on camera there and to get these scoops and just to drive back. And I had another game the next day because when you're in season, you have the Knicks and the Rangers. And so it's just those sacrifices. You're really, really tired. You don't know, you know, you're, you, I had a cheerleading salary. So like that was like, you know, I'm not going to say it because it's still livable in any other state, but it, it was <laughs> Cause like I was working with I mean, that. Honestly though, you can be real. New wow. York is expensive as shit. I mean, it was so expensive. Like, okay, so granted, I feel ridiculous. We would get we would get about one twenty per game, per game, which isn't bad because the NFL is literally not that. So NBA, we were fine. But yeah, I was I was working off of that, and then having to to go to MSG back and forth, and you know, to save money, I would be like taking the team meals we had like to go plates and just, just, you know, wrapping it up, stuff like that, little sacrifices like that, that you don't even actually big sacrifices that you don't even know would happen, but just banging off a no sleep. And I don't glorify the grind because I feel like now life is set up so that you shouldn't have to go through the things we went through. Like, why would we want somebody to go through what we went through? Um, but just knowing that that determination was there. And so now that I can appreciate where I am in life and keep going forward and, and being able to re-channel back into those days, um, and then I remember what Terry Jackson told me, don't be satisfied when you're the, the first or the only. So being able to lift up my sisters along the way and, and really making sure that we're all occupying those spaces together, that's really dope. And my brothers, um, but make sure we're, we're all occupying those spaces together. We'll feel more empowered and we'll be able to get more done because we have all of us, you know, in one pushing each other forward. Well, man, we, we were so happy to finally get to chop it up with you. We know right. you've we only touch like a corner of all the things that you do. Right. Uh, if, if we talked about literally all that you get into, the show would have been like three hours long. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a fact. But we give all our guests a gift. We gonna get this shipped out to you. We got yeah, the we got a nice little gift bag for you. you know? The red, red is my power. Red bag, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you want to, we ain't got no. We used to have headphones. <laughs> yeah, we got a shirt. Yeah, you got a t-shirt from uh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Boom, but you know what I'm saying. Got a hoodie. This is this is actually tough. Yeah. So tell her the back, me... tell her the backstory on the hoodie. So actually, uh, a 16 year old boxer he created his own headphone company, and they sent us a bunch of headphones and stuff like that. We actually don't have any more because we gave them all out. But uh, we got we still got some uh, some gear that he uh, gave us. So we just want to say we appreciate you so much for Hope just you taking your too. time out to to be on the show. Uh, hopefully, if we want to do a part two, man, we can actually do it in person. You know, I know do you it in person. I can. It's to come down there oh that's cute okay yeah man so i'm pretty sure he appreciated too but uh we just thank you so much man every all the nodders that you gave us i'm pretty sure a lot of women and men are inspired by your story uh and we just love the fact that you just gave us your time to be on this podcast Oh, thank you for having me. This has been super fun. I could kiki with y'all all day. Y'all yeah. Shout out to represent NC State. You know what I'm saying? We still got to Okay. Wait. Turn it up, y'all. I guess I'm not technically allowed to do it. <laughs> right. What's wrong with him, man? Uh, yeah, so next time we'll have to have you back, get you down in person. We know uh, WNBA season is coming up, so everybody – who we got tuning in. Follow Highlight Her. Follow that. Follow Ari. Right. Um, follow yeah. Law Athlete. Law that. Oh, yeah. subscribe. subscribe. All like, that. Comment. Subscribe. All that. <laughs> comment. Comment. <laughs> we gonna comment back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, man. All right, y'all. That's a wrap. <laughs> Me and my dog wrote this down 50-50. No curtains. I'm closing the curtains. Stop all the acting. I'm tired of all of the purpose.